Hey, church family. Uh, my name is Joe Palakis, one of the pastoral interns, and it's day 30 of going through the Psalms, so we are looking at Psalm 30. And I'm excited to reflect on this one together because I think it gives us a really good glimpse at our emotions, our reactions to our emotions, and of course, God's response to us. So let's go ahead and read Psalm 30 together. Psalm 30, a psalm of David, a song at the dedication of the temple. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. There's a lot in this psalm that I really love. It's been a, a comfort to me for many reasons. And, and one of those reasons, I think, is because here you clearly see a, a deeply emotional man and a infinitely caring God. So Psalm, psalm 30 is a psalm of remembrance and praise. So we see David recording his emotions well. And I, I just want to kind of categorize his emotions into two horribly general categories, joy and sadness. When this psalm was written, David is obviously joyful. He talks about extolling God. He talks about uh, being brought up from Sheol, that he's singing praises and giving thanks to God. He's experiencing favor and joy. He also, towards the end, is talking about dancing and happy dancing, not sad dancing, gladness, praising God, giving thanks forever. So clearly he, he's joyful, but as he's writing, he's remembering times when this actually was not the case. David remembers moments of helplessness. helplessness. He remembers moments of experiencing God's anger, of weeping, tarrying throughout the night. He experiences dismay, the need for mercy. He's mourning. Do we see the emotional range here of this man after God's own heart? This isn't a picture of an emotionally shallow or, or superficially cheerful person. And I wonder how often do we think we have to have the right emotions in order to approach God? Or how often do we even fear our own emotions, thinking and fearing that they will lead us astray? There's certainly a need for biblical wisdom and how to respond to our emotions. And I actually think this psalm gives us a great template for seeing how all of our emotions can drive us to the Lord. So let's see what David does with his emotions. He cries to God for help. Um, he sings, he repeats truth. He turns to the Lord, he cries again, he pleads for mercy. He has this, this great conversation um, with God in verses 9 and 10, which, which I just love. It's, it's an honest dialogue that he has with God. It's, it's almost like he's reasoning with God. He says, what good will come of my death? Will the dust praise you in my place? And what's, I think, fascinating to me is that later in the Psalms, we'll see in Psalm 103 that God remembers our frame. He knows that we are dust. 
And I think about Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. uh, And when the Pharisees try to get him to quiet the crowd, he says, if these are silent, the very stones would cry out. And so clearly God's issue is not a scarcity of praise. It's not like he won't have things or people praising him if David were to cease. So what is David getting at here? I think he's having an honest, desperate conversation with the living God who created him and who cares for him. He ends this with the cry, Lord, be merciful to me. Please be my helper. And so I'm confronted kind of personally with this question of, do I pray like this? Do you? And so in all of this, let's see how God responds All throughout the passage, we see that God is infinitely big and David seems so small. So how does a big God respond to a small, emotional, desperately prayerful man? Well, he draws David up. He heals him. He brings him up. He restores him to life. He brings joy in the morning. He responds to him by turning his sackcloth his morning into dancing, loosing his sackcloth and clothing him with gladness. God responds to our prayers as we bring our emotions and our feelings and our desperation to him. He's moved by it. So do we see the hope here today that our Lord promises rest for our souls? So let's turn to him with the fullness of our hearts and be known and loved by the one who created us.